Hey, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Today, we'll talk about Easter in medicine. It's a funny video, but it has an educational component with that being said. Now, let's get started. In a previous video, I've talked about Christmas in medicine. Easter in medicine is going to be the same thing. Basically, I take some symbols and then I give you their medical equivalent to help you memorize. So first, we'll talk about the eggs and then the fluffy bunny, the carrot, the fish and one more thing. First, the eggs. And no, we are not talking about your testicles. Eggs and medicine. Oligodendroglioma looks as fried egg appearance on H and E stain under the microscope. Dysgerminoma sheets of uniform fried egg cells. What do you mean by fried egg? I mean the cells are large with clear cytoplasm and central nuclei resembling the oocytes. So it basically looks like this. Here is the egg and here is the nucleus. But then there is a clear cytoplasm around the nucleus. And that's how it looks like a fried egg. It's easy. Pathologists are hungry. This germinoma is equivalent to seminoma. This germinoma in females, seminoma in males. So both of them will have fried egg appearance. Sarcoidosis has egg shell calcification of the hilar lymph nodes. We call this bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Silicosis can also have egg shell calcification. The egg yolk contains cholesterol. Raw egg white contains avidin, which avidly bind biotin, which will lead to vitamin B7 or biotin deficiency. Next, the fluffy bunny. Rabbits can carry Coxiella burnetti, which will lead to Q fever. They can also carry Bartonella elastica, which can lead to Bartonellosis. The most important thing is here, rabbits can carry Francisella tularensis, leading to tularemia, aka rabbit fever. What's the treatment? Streptomycin and gentamicin, or gentamicin. Rabbits can carry Yersinia pseudotuberculosis, leading to Yersiniosis. It can also carry Hepatitis E virus, leading to viral Hepatitis E. The larvae of rabbit and rodent, butterflies, whatever that means, can lead to dermal or tracheopulmonary meiasis. What is meiasis? Meiasis is fly infestation. Rabbit is the bunny and there are a group of viruses called the Bunia viridae, and these are freaking RNA viruses. They have nothing to do with rabbits, just except that the name is like bunny. That's it. Let's talk about the carrots because they are the bunny's food. Carrots. Carrots are a great source of vitamin A. Vitamin A is very important for vision, especially night vision. And that's why vitamin A deficiency leads to something called nectalopia. What does opia mean? Opia means vision. What does A mean? No. So no vision. And nicta means night. No vision at night, aka night blindness, because vitamin A was essential for night vision. Vitamin A excess is called hypercarotinemia lots of vitamin A and it can lead to orange skin like this Dr. Rosemary Biggs which we have talked about it before in my previous video on Christmas in medicine and when her skin is orange we call this carotinoderma and I am tempted to make a political joke but I'm not going to. Eating raw carrots can lead to Yersinia pseudotuberculosis which can lead to Yersiniosis. Yep, raw carrots. Instagram influencers have left the chat. Does that mean that every person who's gonna eat raw carrots is gonna... No, it doesn't mean every patient. Instagram influencers have rejoined the chat. In 2006, carrot juice commercially sold led to six reported cases of botulism in the USA and Canada. Instagram influencers have deleted their account. Next is fish. Not just fish, but seafood in general. Canned tuna, especially if the can is damaged, can lead to Clostridium botulinum. By the way, I have bad news and good news. The bad news is this is a very bad toxin. Even like few milligrams or even micrograms can kill you. What is the good news? The good news is you can destroy it by heat. So if you are in doubt that the can was damaged, just Cook the tuna and you'll be fine. How does botulism affect my body? It decreases acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction leading to flaccid paralysis. And this is different from tetanus because tetanus is the opposite. Tetanus will decrease GABA and GABA is inhibitory. Without inhibition, you have excitation, which will lead to spasticity such as locked jaw rhesus, sardonicus, etc. So, with botulism, you're flaccid. With titanus, you are spastic. 
Fish meal dust exposure can lead to fish meal worker's lung, one of the occupational lung diseases. It can lead to an interstitial lung disease, lung fibrosis. I've told you in my pulmonology playlist that there are more than 100 diseases of these. Undercooked seafood can lead to a variety of disease, including something called Schwannella species, leading to Schwannellosis or Schwannella disease, can lead to skin ulcer, osteomyelitis, biliary tract infection, etc. It can lead to cryptosporidium or cryptosporidiosis, yes indeed. Undercooked seafood consumption can lead to schistosomiasis, anisakiasis, hepatitis A, capillariasis. It can lead to Vibrio cholera, Vibrio vulnificus, Vibrio parahemolyticus. These three are very important for your exam. Diphilobothrium latum, or also known as fish tapeworm, which will lead to vitamin B12 deficiency, and I have a video about it on my channel. Undercooked seafood can also lead to heterophis heterophis. I love this name. If I have a son one day, his name will be heterophis heterophis. Toxoplasma gondii leading to toxoplasmosis, chlorinurcus sinensis, nathostomiasis, and even paragonimus wistermani. Who named these things? Fish tanks or swimming pools can lead to mycobacterium marinum infection, papules, ulcers, etc. Eating spoiled fish can lead to scombroid poisoning, usually due to histamine release. We have talked about the fish poisoning, now let's talk about the fish odor. Fish odors, it depends where it's coming from. Fishy body odor, this could be a choline toxicity, you know, acetylcholine, yep, when you have lots of choline in your body, your body can smell like fish. Fishy breath odor is a side effect of lots of omega-3 fatty acid consumption, also known as fish oil. Fishy odor in the vagina equals bacterial vaginosis, so what's the organism? Gardnerella vaginalis. We're talking about Easter, and there is an island in Chile called Easter Island. And in 2014, they discovered a Zika virus there, or they found it there. It was not the first location. It wasn't the origin of the virus. Easter Island, also known as Rapa Nui in the original language. Um, I don't know about it. But Rapa from Rapamycin. That's why we called it Rapamycin, because it was discovered in Rapa, which is Easter Island. What is rapamycin? It's the inhibitor of mTOR. mTOR is a famous receptor discovered by a medical student. Yes, indeed, it can happen. Now, there is a difference between Easter and Eastern. If you add an N, it's completely different in meaning. However, it's still involved in medicine. Eastern equine encephalitis virus is a toga virus, which is an RNA virus. Middle Eastern respiratory syndrome or MERS is a corona freaking virus, and it's an RNA virus. And one more thing. Easter is about salvation. In medicine, we have the salvage system, which means salvation. Let me explain. If you want to buy a car, you either buy a new car or a used car. In medicine, if you want to make purine, you either make new purine or you recycle the used purine. We call this the de novo synthesis pathway. We call this the salvage pathway. There is a non-profit organization in the United States called the Salvation Army. Why do we call it Salvation? Because they salvage stuff. If you don't want your bike, give them their bike and they will give it to someone else at a cheap price. We have talked about gout before. In the next video, we'll talk about the management of gout and I'll tell you about the purine salvage system. So we have talked about the eggs, the bunny, the carrots, the fish and one more thing. When you hear one more thing, who do you remember? The late Steve Jobs, who always talked about Apple's core mission and purpose. And here is a joke for you. Steve Jobs spoke about the core of Apple, but pathologists talk about the Apple core lesion. Ha ha, pathologists are hungry. So, Apple core lesion, where do you see that? What disease? Let me know the answer in the comment section. My cardiac pharmacology course and my antibiotics course are on sale on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. You can get my cardiac pharmacology course, my antibiotics course, and my electrolytes course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.